Hey guys, I'm recording another video showing you how to uh, do mortgage pass-through cal calculations with prepayments and this is an example that you might see um, in, in the midterm exam. So the premise is the following, there's a mortgage pass-through security um, and it consists of 100 mortgages that were originally issued at 100,000 each. Um, there is a 100 PSA prepayment rate. Each mortgage is issued at 9.5% annual uh, mortgage rate. There is a half a percent servicing fee that's also annual. All mortgages are 30 year, <coughs> excuse me, fixed rate mortgages with monthly payments. And you also are giving the beginning pool balance in month 12, which is $9,834,023. In addition to this information, I would also give you uh, the formula for converting the conditional prepayment rate to single month mortality rate and um, a way to get the conditional prepayment rate from the PSA formula. So before we begin with questions, I just wanted to outline the timeline of what happens with these mortgages. So month 12 begins with and this we know with nine million eight hundred thirty four thousand and twenty three dollars uh, balance on all mortgages remaining right that's the total balance of all the mortgages the first thing that happens is borrowers or people who are who've taken out these hundred mortgages, they make scheduled payments. Remember that each payment has a portion that goes to interest. This essentially is as a return. on funds that are held up in these mortgages by investors and the other the remaining portion of these payments goes towards principal so what principal does is it reduces the ballot mortgage balance okay at the same time, borrowers might decide to prepay. So this is anything in addition to the scheduled payments that goes towards repaying principal. So this also then reduces, the prepayments also then reduce, um, reduce mortgage balance. Okay, so now the SPV or the servicer collects the one and two to be passed on to investors. Investors are people who actually have equity stakes in the mortgage pass-through security, so they are the ones who should be receiving all of these payments. However, the servicers retain, before they pass through uh, all the payments, they retain servicing fee. All right, and then finally, investors get one plus two minus servicing fee. Okay, so now that that is clear, let's start with the questions. So the first question is, what is the regularly scheduled principal and interest payment in month 12? So this should be very familiar. So the present value at the beginning of month 12, we are given and it's equal to the outstanding balance. The interest rate 
is 9.5% annual. So for this calculation, we'll be putting in 9.5% over 12 because we have monthly payments. And the number of payments remaining is, well, the total number of payments that were, um, that were on these mortgages, which is 30 times, 30 times 12 months in each year, so that's 360, minus how many payments were already made before month 12. So that would be 11 payments. Now this is important that you don't put 12 in there because the 12th payment hasn't already been made. Right, that's, that's what we're calculating right now. So it should be 360 minus 11, which is 349. And now to find out the payment, we just put in the calculator all these values and we get 83,157.97. Now I did these calculations before, oops, didn't mean to do that, 97 cents. I wanted to highlight it. Okay, now I did these calculations beforehand, so I don't waste time on this, but uh, if you wanna check for yourself that you're getting the same number, please feel free to pause this recording and do this for yourself. The next question is, what is the single month mortality rate for this pool in month 12? And what is the dollar amount of prepayment in month 12? So before we compute the single month mortality rate, we first need to get the conditional prepayment rate. So the conditional prepayment rate at month 12, we were going for that, we need to use the PSA formula. So that has been given to you in the problem. Now T is less than 30, whoop, T is less than 30. So this is the formula that we'll be using. So it is 6% times 12 over 30. And that is equal to 2.4%. Now from there, we need to compute the single month mortality rate. That is a function of conditional prepayment rate. And that formula is again given to you on top right here. So it is 1 minus 1 minus CPR to the 1 over 12th power. Now be careful when you put in the formula for single month mortality rate to convert the CPR into a number rather than keeping it as a percentage. Right, so it is 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.024 to the power of 1 over 12. And I have also pre-computed that, and that is equal to 0 0.002, etc. Now this is important. Please do not round this number if you can help it. If you round this to two digits, you get zero, which is going to be a wrong answer. Um, I will uh, I will post guidelines in the beginning of the exam, but I'm going to ask you to retain eight. If you need to write this down separately and you don't save it in your calculator, uh, I'm going to ask you to retain eight digits for this number. Okay, so next thing we need to compute the dollar amount. So the dollar amount is the single month mortality rate times the pool balance. So this is this number times 9 million. Um, eight hundred thirty four thousand and twenty three cents and what you should get is nineteen thousand eight hundred eighty seven dollars and seventy three cents
more or less. I mean, if we, if the dispersion is within a dollar, it's totally fine. Okay. Next up. In month 12, how much of the mortgage payments received by the issuer is attributable to principal and to interest? So remember the first question that asked uh, for the payment, we're going to use this for this question as well. So first let's compute the interest. So the interest is the interest rate times the pool balance. So this is since the investors have the pool balance essentially tied up in this security, they need to get their return, their interest on this pool balance. So this will be 9.5% over 12 times 9,834,023. And that is equal to seventy-seven thousand eight hundred and fifty-two and sixty-eight cents. So that is the interest portion. And now for the principal, well, we know that the payment of eighty-three thousand contains the principal and the interest. So the principal is just the remaining portion of the payment. So it's eighty-three thousand hundred fifty-seven. 97 minus the interest. So let me actually write this down. In case you made the mistake before, write down that it is the pool balance minus interest. So that if the numbers are wrong, you can get the partial credit. So that's 83,157.98. Minus seventy-seven eight fifty-two point sixty-eight. Okay, so that is equal to five thousand three hundred and five and twenty-nine cents. Again, I did these calculations before. Feel free to pause and, and check for yourself. How much is the servicing fee in month twelve? So servicing fee. is the fee times the pool balance. The fee is half a percent annually, so we need to divide that by 12, and we multiply that by $9,834,023. And that is equal to four thousand and ninety seven dollars fifty cents how much cash will be passed through to investors in month 12 so cash flow to investors remember is all payments so the scheduled payment plus prepayment minus the servicing fee. That is equal to, let's see, our scheduled payment was 83,157.97 cents. The prepayment was Nineteen thousand eight hundred eighty-seven point seventy-three, and the servicing fee was four thousand and ninety-seven dollars and fifty cents. So that comes down to ninety-eight thousand nine hundred forty-eight cents and twenty. Sorry. $98,948.24. This is how much the investors take home. And finally, what is the month 12 ending balance or the beginning balance of month 13? Well, the ending balance is the beginning balance
minus everything that got paid towards reducing that balance. So the principal portion of scheduled payment minus prepayment. Okay, so the beginning balance again we know is nine million eight hundred thirty four thousand twenty three cents the principal portion of scheduled payment that we calculated earlier is uh, five thousand three hundred and five and twenty nine cents and the prepayment we also computed earlier is the nineteen thousand eight hundred eighty seven Seventy three cents. So the total comes down to nine million eight hundred and eight thousand eight hundred and thirty dollars. Okay, and that's it. So hopefully, this was helpful. Um, again, we'll have a review session on Monday, and uh, good luck studying.